Trust is a positive and designed way to approach co-workers, either colleagues, subordinates or superiors. However, there are situations where trust itself is not enough. This does not mean that trust cannot exist in these situations. It is, however, more reassuring for both parties if they can rely on more tangible facts. It is common in large companies that on one hand, users with privileged access to critical systems feel as if they were holding this gun. On the other hand, the superiors feel that they are the potential victims. This situation is extremely frustrating for everyone. One example is the IT administrator, who is at the lowest level of corporate hierarchy, but at the same time possesses the highest scope for authority. This contradiction results in the administrator having unlimited rights over a whole system. They have to work under strict rules and regulations, whereas the same system records and even stores the logs of these activities. Therefore, such evidence is not authentic enough. Since all corporate processes are handled electronically, the unlimited rights of the administrators over the computer systems practically mean unlimited rights over the whole company. When stakes are high, trust becomes only a meaningless expression. What makes this situation more difficult is that many standards require the upper management to take financial and criminal responsibility for only the IT systems that they have direct influence on with the above mentioned limitations. It is not a coincidence that in certain cases rules and regulations force companies to log each event that affects the system. These can be, for example, banking systems that handle account information financial systems of stock exchanges and infrastructure providers, along with the government sector handling personal data of citizens. In addition to these, all companies that deal with sensitive data must handle them carefully. The law does not recognise trust. Trust can only exist between people, but not between positions. The law only accepts firm evidence. We can trust an employee, we can even trust the subcontractor, but a subcontractor can hire another subcontractor who can hire an outside expert. When we reach the end of this chain, trust has already disappeared. What is this device? SCB is an independent device that acts as a node in the network architecture. Each privileged access connection goes through this node. SCB is capable of limiting the possibilities of administrators just as a firewall. For example, it can enforce authentication rules or forbid certain protocol services. SCB saves traffic going through the administrative connections to a format that is searchable and replayable. It is capable of saving the traffic of encrypted connections such as the SSH. You can run textual search in graphics protocols such as RDP. What is it good for? I will show you some examples. The manager of the administrators gain real operative authority over his subordinates. Uncontrollable rules are replaced with impenetrable rules with the SCB. It is unnecessary to trust or supervise rule observation since the SCB enforces them. The server and client applications do not have to be modified in order to use SCB. It integrates smoothly into the existing infrastructure. It requires significantly less time and work in forensic situations if tracing back an event that means only watching a video rather than going through hundreds of log files. With SCB, it is also possible to ensure that a supervisor is logged into the system along with the administrator while administering the most critical processes or handling extremely sensitive data. This four eyes authorization is similar to the safety protocol when bank safes can only be uttered with two keys simultaneously. Both the owner and the bank clerk must be present. This level of protection is extremely useful when handling critical systems is either outsourced or done by external professionals. How does it work? Actually, SCB monitors the encrypted traffic between the client and the server. 
How can this be achieved without knowing the appropriate keys? It is not possible. However, you can provide SCB with your secret keys, because it is your own device, just as the servers. SCB ends the encrypted connections coming from the client and starts new one towards the server with its own keys. This is not a problem since SCB is your own, just as the workstations of your administrators so you can trust it. Traffic decrypted by SCB is stored in encrypted, digitally signed, timestamped and compressed audit trail files. These files can only be accessed at a separate authorization level that is different from the administrative authorization level of the shell control box. Replaying is done direct from the protocol itself, not from videos. Therefore, you can store a year of compressed data on one single device. Replaying is only useful if it is easy to find what we are looking for. Thus, audit trail files are indexed and made searchable. This is not difficult with text-based protocols like Telnet and SSH, since the saved files consist of text only. However, RDP protocols used by Windows systems contain graphical information. These are indexed real-time with the aid of character recognition software. Therefore, all textual information is searchable that has been displayed on the screen.